Hey guys, this is Eckhart Slaughter. Hello and welcome to another Star Wars lore video. Today's will be a bit rambly because I am talking about something in the Star Wars universe that just really doesn't make sense and has a variety of representations both in canon, legends, on screen, off screen, and anywhere else. And we'll be talking specifically today about shields and specifically starship shielding in Star Wars. This will be a rambling video because I think there's just so much lore. I mean, capital ship shields plus play into pretty much every piece of Star Wars media that it's hard to track down each and every instance. But if this is something you guys want to learn more about, we can also go there if it is desired. All right, so let's start with the basics of shielding in Star Wars, kind of the key principles that the expanded universe in particular has set up to exist for some time. Basically, there are multiple different types of shielding. We have particle shields, which unsurprisingly stop particles, whether that's something like a missile, at least according to the lore, or an asteroid or a starfighter with the essential guide to warfare saying that particle shields protected against impacts that couldn't be diffused such as projectiles micrometeorites or asteroids but also had to be lowered to allow ships to launch or projectile weapons to be fired leaving vulnerable gaps particle shield is a type of deflector shield deflector shield being the umbrella term for shielding in the star wars universe the other type or at least the other main type of shield would be a ray shield which stops against energy primarily so some Something like a turbo laser or laser cannon, at least theoretically, will be diffused by the ray shield, then a projectile, whether that's a missile or a coil gun or whatever else, will be stopped by the particle shield. So those are the basics, and you'll notice that for most of them I said theoretically, and that's because when we actually get into either legends and canon, and specifically when we look at space battles, usually things don't actually work like this, and shields have a variety of behaviors. I mean, let's look at video games first, because I think they're an interesting example that really clearly show how these rules have been interpreted differently although I will mention some of this would have been for gameplay reasons rather than anything else if we play for example Star Wars Squadrons the recent release by EA Motive which I'm showing on screen right now the way shields work is this you cannot fire on a capital ship either with missiles or laser cannons from outside the shield but the starfighter itself can fly under the shield then attack the capital ship directly that is a bit of a weird distinction in my opinion, because really a starfighter is just a more complicated projectile than something like a missile, but it does work from a gameplay perspective, so I want to be clear that I'm not complaining or anything. When it comes to a game like Empire at War, that game only has shields which protect against lasers, while missiles pass straight through and damage the ship directly. Theoretically, this could be something related to speed, because we see in the Clone Wars that they bypass the Droidica shields by rolling a grenade slowly underneath, but that's not really what we see in space battles here, I don't think, and torpedoes aren't moving that much faster than starfighters going at a full clip. And this ships passing through shields thing is something we see all the time in the movies as well. For example, in episode 8, Kylo Ren attacks the Radis by flying under the shields directly and launching lasers and missiles against the ship. Now, this could be because the particle shields were down for some reason, or that the Radis didn't have particle shields, but we see stuff like this all the time. In episode 5, we also see Han Solo bypass the shields of a Star Destroyer to park on its superstructure. And what's more, despite what we see in the Essential Guide to Warfare, it's pretty common to see ships launch from hangars without any sort of apparent communication with their carrier, just go straight through the shields and start fighting. Turbo lasers are fired from inside shields, which I guess means that they only work in one direction. But it's really the fighters flying through shields thing that we see a lot. Another example from Episode 8 would also be when Poe attacks the Dreadnought although perhaps because that's a siege platform it doesn't have shields or it doesn't have enough power to generate projectile shielding but whatever these are just a few examples which explicitly show kind of contradictions in my opinion there's also the fact that when you watch the movies for example the battle of coruscant the space battles aren't written like the ships have shields against physical projectiles sometimes in my opinion they're not written like they have shields at all and i can't think of very cases in the star wars movies that actually show projectiles dial shields on capital ships. We have maybe the shield gate on the Battle of Scarif. I would say arguably the fleet had to take a really drastic turn against the Death Star 2 because they realized the shield was still up and they'd crash against it. But other than that, the shields we see protect against lasers and not much else. There are also just lots of cases in the Star Wars Expanded Universe of ships being weird with how they treat projectiles and shields with fighters or projectiles often passing through shields directly. Now this depends pretty heavily on the author. Somebody like Timothy Zahn 
one focuses a lot on explaining how shields and in particular planetary shields work. And you could say the same of Michael Stackpole or Aaron Alston. They were not only pretty consistent with what they did in their own series, but with the greater lore as a whole. But that's not always the case. And generally it comes down to the fact that shields basically will work to how the plot needs them and to how the space battle will be the coolest. We'll come back to this in a second. But the Clone Wars is another example of a piece of Star Wars media, which doesn't really portray capital ships as having powerful anti-particle shields. We see, for example, in the Ryloth episode, that an acclimator gets shot down with physical anti-air weapons without putting up any resistance, really, which seems disproportionately weak for a ship of that size if it did have anti-projectile shielding. But otherwise, there are lots of cases of fighters flying underneath a capital ship shields before the ship has taken any real damage. A good example of that would be the Malevolence, but this happens time and time again, so often not only in the Clone Wars, but basically everywhere, that there is a clear inconsistency between what happens on the page and on screen and what the source books say. But ultimately, does that really matter? Not really. Shields are a sort of MacGuffin. If a ship needs to be taken down or something that just sort of works as it should in the background, and that's fine for me because Star Wars isn't science fiction really. It's certainly not hard science fiction, and often it's not even consistent. I will say though, whenever I'm reading a Star Wars Legends or Canon book and there is a shield inconsistency, it does take me out of what I'm doing. But you can also explain away a lot of what's going on by some nice details that are featured about shields. For example, the Michael Stackpole uh, X-Wing books talk a lot about taking down specific portions of shields with concentrated fire. That help explains how Y-Wings, for example, can take down the shields of a Star Destroyer or part of the shields, then attack underneath. We also hear a lot about angling deflector shields, which basically means you can put the entirety of your ship's shields towards the back. That help explains some aspects of The Last Jedi, but not all of it, and I'd say not even a lot of it. Shields are also inconsistent when it comes to appearance. You can see in the episode one scene with Anakin in the hangar that his shield sort of wraps around his starfighter. You can also see what I believe to be a shield in episode two, but then in episode eight, the shields are more bubble shaped, and I'd say that's the description that you get most in the expanded universe, the sort of bubble with discrete sections that each can be taken down or can have power distributed across across them. But guys, that's my ramble about shields in Star Wars. Let me know if you enjoyed it. I hope this didn't get too into the weeds. If you'd like me to do more research and give you guys more explicit examples of what works and what doesn't work with the sort of lore bases we have, I can do so, but I'm not super keen on it. Until next time though, guys, have a good one, be safe, and may the Force be with you.